I would like to express my sincere condolences and deep sympathy to the families of the victims and those grieving in El Hula and throughout Syria. I also wish to express my deep concern that, for the fourth time, the Human Rights Council is compelled to convene a special session to discuss the situation in Syria. I would like to echo the calls of the Secretary General and of the Joint Special Envoy, Mr. Kofi Annan, for an immediate end to all forms of violence and human rights violations by all parties. We must make all efforts to end impunity, to ensure accountability for perpetrators, and to provide adequate and effective remedies for the victims. I take this opportunity to call again on the government of Syria to assume its responsibility to protect the civilian population in the country. I reiterate that those who order, assist, or fail to stop attacks on civilians are individually criminally liable for their actions. Other states have a duty to do all they can to prevent and prosecute perpetrators of international crimes. Once again, I urge the Security Council to consider referring the case of Syria to the International Criminal Court. I am appalled by the atrocities committed in El Hula. Preliminary investigations indicate that attacks, possibly directed at the civilian population, have resulted in the killing of 108 people, including 49 children and 34 women. According to preliminary reports, on Friday the 25th of May at 12.30 p.m., shortly after a demonstration had taken place, the Syrian military allegedly unleashed a barrage of heavy weapons on the El Hula area, including artillery, and tank fire, which continued until 2 a.m. on Saturday, the 26th of May. Some reports suggest that pro-government Shabiha paramilitary groups also entered the villages and may bear responsibility for dozens of killings. These acts may amount to crimes against humanity and other international crimes and may be indicative of a pattern of widespread or systematic attacks against civilian populations that have been perpetrated with impunity. On May the 30th, the permanent mission of the Syrian Arab Republic sent a note verbal to the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, attributing the killings in El Hule to what it called terrorist armed groups. The government of Syria stated that its military was acting only in self-defense and that it sought to protect the civilian population. The government said that three members of the armed forces were killed and 16 soldiers were injured as a result of the armed clashes in El Hule. The government of Syria said that it established an interministerial committee to investigate these events. Nevertheless, there is a need for prompt, independent, and impartial international investigations into all serious human rights violations in Syria, including those that have occurred in El Hula. Excellencies, I urge the international community to throw its weight behind the Joint Envoy six-point plan and call for the conduct of immediate investigations into the El Hula events, as well as into other human rights violations committed in Syria. Otherwise, the situation in Syria might descend into a full-fledged conflict, and the future of the country, as well as the region as a whole, could be in grave danger. We must do our utmost to prevent this from happening. We deplore the fact that since the last special session and after more than one year of widespread violence, the situation has alarmingly deteriorated. The killings which have occurred over the past few days have again alerted us to the imperative for immediate action from the highest level, 
in particular President Assad. We condemn in the strongest possible terms the series of attacks on residential areas, in particular the recent massacres of civilians in the village of El Hole, reportedly involving government forces and militias. We are particularly shocked at the death of numerous young children. We recall the state's obligations to protect every individual's right to life, including children, under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The indiscriminate and disproportionate use of artillery and tank shelling against residential areas is unacceptable. Madam President, Syria has announced a number of times, as it announces today again, that it is responsible for protecting its people against killings and against terrorism. And Syria reaffirms again that it will do everything that is necessary as part of our Syrian laws and as part of our commitments towards the various international treaties and conventions to protect our people and to emerge from this crisis. Everyone has got to realize that the solution in Syria will never ever be through the dialogue using weapons and arms. Rather, the solution will be through a positive and constructive debate between those who would like to forego violence, killings and terrorism and those who place the interest of Syria and its future and its safety above all other considerations. I thank you.